back on. You have a moment. Not really, no. This won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, and you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Still, you've got a keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just, well, Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. Here we go again. A sword. An odd looking thing with a single edge blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. <laughs> you could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. So that's what's troubling you. Nah, no, no, no. Not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How do you get an edge that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. Hmm. I'll see what I can find out. Sharper swords are always welcome. And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. Sure, a soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you. Let's see what Karen knows about this sword. I got your note. You think something's wrong with Torgor? So you can read. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I didn't say I was wrong with him. I said some weren't right. He's not been eating me treats. He used to love cracking the bones from Molly's boiled brown, but now he won't so much as look at him. Didn't like him. Which is why I'm of the mind that his mind's on summit else. Hmm. You've not been working him too hard, have you? No harder than usual. Is that it, boy? Do you need a rest? I guess that's a no. What was it you said he was? A frost wolf? That's what the lawsman seems to think. Then maybe this all has something to do with whatever it is that's woken inside him. I suppose things happen in differences, Rosaleth. Perhaps Hippocrates knows something. Instead of everything, you mean? Perhaps. All right, I gotta talk to her again. You're looking well, Karen. What do you want? How were they? I want to know about the sword you showed Blackthorn. Single-edged and extremely sharp. Running around after him again, are you? I suppose I am, yes. But I need to help him find out how to work an edge like that. It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections. Which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? Suppose you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? Fine. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignac's the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favorite clients. Reckon he'll still be at the inn in Dalamil, where I left him. Thank you, Karen. Oh, and he's a touch eccentric. If you take my meaning. I appreciate the warning. to ask you about Torgor. Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite, which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. 
all canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within. And I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torkoal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed to providing are no longer sufficient. Frost wolves, after all, habitually prey upon far larger animals, whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. Good hunting, Clive. Mid said I can ride the Enterprise now. He said. I'm looking for Doris. Is she here? I'm afraid not. She's at Martha's rest on a job. My job, actually. When she heard what the mission was, she insisted on going herself. Alone. Did she? What was the mission? Following up on some new information. Once they'd settled in, the bearers you helped liberate in the Dragon's Airy were keen to talk about their imprisonment. And about their captor. The slaver Cole's team were tracking when they were attacked by the beastmen. I'll go and find her. She's at Martha's rest, you say? If she's not moved on already, yes. I hope everything's all right. Why would Doris insist on going alone? Maybe Cole was right to be worried. Clive, did you get my letter? That's why I'm here. Shh. I don't want you listening. Is this better? <laughs> A little. Listen. I have some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders. And it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess. I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time, and I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I'd say. Uh-oh. There you are. What a surprise. So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due, and instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. No good thing you have the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan. Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen. But only 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Oh Each. my gosh. Five million. <sighs> they lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see. And, well, I, I must have made some sort of oversight. Those ledgers were my responsibility. And it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. 
we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. We lightened Lord Rossfield's purse enough. After the King's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're gonna make this work. All right. But that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How'd you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dane? I can Rocks. do that. I got business in Martha's Rest, mainly Rocks, Martha's Rest anyway. He says. Worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Hmm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe, and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Go. You know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Because... You'd rather Lady Karen killed me. <laughs> because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose this is goodbye then. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm sure Karen will understand. Really? Do you think so? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, knowing Lady Karen. Oh, this is going to be... Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Come to claim your just desserts. You earned this. All done? How do you split the sea? Got that guy. <coughs> Man black. So not too many new hunts, so just like we got six left on board to mark off. Should be somewhere nearby. Assuming she's still here. This is no time to ride. <sighs> Just because the heavens have gone to wreck a room, you don't know. Martha's right here, I know I can always... Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. 
Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all? Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Thank you, Martha. Oh, Rutherford. Darn it! Where's Doris? It doesn't still hurt, does it? Oh, a thousand Akasha jaws couldn't hurt me. Oh. It's been a pleasure, Doris. Just like old times. What the heck? I'll give you offer some thought, my lady. How goes the investigation? Sid, what brings you to Martha's Rest? You. I heard you were out here on your own, tracking our slaver. I trust you're being careful. Of course. And it had to be me. The bearers from the Dragon's Airy confirmed a long-held suspicion of mine that the slaver we've been tracking is an old acquaintance. She's no fool. If we'd come in force, she would have spotted us straight away, and then vanished without a trace. That was her just now, wasn't it? So... Was it a fruitful reunion? I'd say so. She tried to recruit me. Seems her time in Rosaria is coming to an end. She's abducted bearers from across the region and is looking to smuggle them back into Sambrek. After her brush with those beastmen on the road to Northreach, she hired herself an Imperial escort. Which she wants me to join. She's dangerous, Sid, but I think I can stop her. Then I'm going with you. I'll take care of the escort. You can see the bearers to safety. Where are they? The Baum Arches, soon to break camp. You go on ahead. I'll follow once I've sent word back to the hideaway. Build a barricade so sturdy, even if I Whoever's idea it was to take those bearers away to Wispool has my thanks. Upstairs. My lord, Marcus, it is you. Then you received my letter. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your lord uncle's estate. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... 
It's all right. Continue. I am here at Martha's rest, at the behest of your lord, uncle. Tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. And what I have learned is grim. If all of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. The gears of governance have ground to a halt. And without a steady hand on the tiller, the realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord, uncle, uh, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate, and is determined to see it set in motion. That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the Seven High Houses. Alas... Alas... I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword, yet in these dark times even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old Imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. I suppose I'll start in Dalamel and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I shall pray for your success and safety. Let's get Tor Torgal taken care of. giant antelope. He would seem like just the place. I doubt we'll find one bigger than that. You hungry, Toggle? <laughs> Be enough, I wonder. 
Aww. I say that answers my question. Which means we owe the lawsmen our thanks. You're just a big puppy, aren't you? <laughs> a very big puppy. <laughs> You know you can take that with you, Togol. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. right from here. Right, the escort. Good. They haven't broken camp yet. How did Doris come to know a slaver, I wonder? We've waited long enough. She's not coming. Ready the bearers. We're leaving. 
Back to civilization, is it, Mom? With all haste, lest any of you lackwits start talking like these feckless bumpkins. I presume your men are ready. We've suffered too many delays as it is. Any more, and I'll be docking your pay. Uh, yes, Mom. Oh, but before you go, it appears we have company. Kill him. You're welcome to try. So much for your escort. <laughs> You'll forgive me for not avenging my men. I'm not the swordswoman I used to be. I surrender. Do with me as you wish, Sid the Outlaw. Sid! Doris. Ah, oh, Doris. I take it you're not here to rescue me from our brooding renegade? You know, I always wondered where you'd vanished to. But casting your lot with this criminal of all people. Better fighting for a cause than killing for coin. I'm sorry, Sid. I should have told you sooner. This woman, my former master, once trained bearer children to be weapons in service of the highest bidder. She raised me like a daughter. And I did terrible things to earn her favor. It wasn't all terrible, surely. We had our fun, too. You were always so eager to learn, and had such clever hands. All my other children took either to the blade or to the books. Always either or. But you proved yourself a master of both. That's why I kept you for my own. How about it, my little dagger? Care to swear that blade to me again? I never swore my blade to you, nor will I ever. I fight for a higher cause, to liberate the heroes of this world. Farewell, master. Thank you for making me the weapon I am. You always were a righteous child. Perhaps that's the reason I loved you so. So what's gonna happen to her now? What do you want to do with her? I am not the killer she wanted me to be. Not anymore. And she no longer has friends in high places. The dame does, though. Her connections at the Imperial Court will see that justice is done. All right. If you're certain. I am. And thank you for everything. Now, I better let these bearers know that they're safe. And I should head back to the hideaway and put Cole's mind at ease. Back at the hideaway, huh? 
Welcome back, Sid. Doris's message just arrived. I hear you saved more bearers from being smuggled across the border. With any luck, they'll be joining us in the hideaway shortly. Oh, and Muleta. You don't need to worry about Doris anymore. I'd been hoping as much. She mentioned one or two things in her report. So the slaver we'd been chasing all these months was her former master. <laughs> Wish I'd known. She's been arrested, by the way, over in Sambrek. Went quietly, or so we're told. She won't be getting off lightly. The Empire may have no love for bearers, but it's none too fond of black market traders either. Can't have been easy for Doris. I'm sure it wasn't. But don't worry. She'll be all right. I hope so. Suppose you should know, eh? You had quite the past yourself before you came here, or so I understand. Anyway, thanks again, Sid. The curse breakers will be lost without Doris. And you, of course. Keep up the good work, Carl. Go up another level. I noticed you and Togo had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? Sort of. You could say that. Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? That'll teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. <laughs> all right, all right, no need to shout. Now I know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. Speaking of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? You can, eh? I'm nice like that. In return, you can thank Tomes for me. The bloody know it all. <laughs> I was just on my way to see him. Ah, Clive. Were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady I love happy wolves. Way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah. But that reminds me. After your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation. About how she somehow woke the power within him. Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you describe Torgal as having used. Are you suggesting? Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty. And that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more... fierce of late. And if I am not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. <laughs> oh, he's more than an ally. He's a friend.
Oh. Mitchell, I can ride the Enterprise next. <laughs> 